Welcome to the second part of the Netbox installation tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can uh, configure the HTTP daemon uh, with or without uh, HTTPS. So if you are actually thinking um, to run um, HTTPS for your Netbox, uh, you will need to generate a valid certificate. So first of all, we will create a directory uh, in um, Etsy SSL and then the name of the new directory will be private and if you're uh, also following the guide that um, I have given you the link for you're gonna see here the HTTP server setup so first you need to get a SSL certificate and as you can see here we can use this command to create the key and the certificate so I'm just gonna paste it and then hit enter US country name you can put anything I'm just gonna put US something state or province let's put NY NY yeah and then I don't know you can hit enter enter you don't necessarily need to fill it up with something in particular Okay, so if you're not thinking to run HTTPS, you don't need to do this step. Then we will have to copy the Goonicorn configuration or to configure it in somehow. Yeah. So we will need to go to opt and then netbox, do an ls. And um, the Goonicorn configuration will actually be located here. So we can go uh and copy the gunicorn configuration from that folder on the trip then gunicorn py and we will just do it here ah of course i need to specify something uh Okay, let's do an ls and everything looks fine we have the new python 5 here uh, next we will uh, have to take care about uh, system deconfiguration and um, again the um, service files uh, are also in the contrib folder so let's do copy contrib and then uh, we will copy all the files that will end in service and we will move them or copy them to Etsy system D and then system next we can actually start and run a uh, netbox uh, services so we will just do a daemon reload and over here we can say systemctl start then netbox and netbox services rq hit enter and right now we can check the status of them they are running fine let's check the other one Again, it's fine, this one too. Next, we will need to create a, a virtual host uh, for uh, HTTPD because we will, run, um, we will run the HTTP web interface with Apache. So we will go to HTTPD uh, conf.d and then uh, we will uh, create uh, the new one uh, let's call it netbox.conf okay this is our file to make it easier for us I have copied everything from a text file to this one now to make it look uh, simpler uh, let's get rid of all the spaces in here 
Okay, so this one looks much better, I would say. And over here, uh, this is the port that I have uh, chosen to run the service on, to listen for. So it's uh, 8085. Uh, this is the, here we will put the um, IP address for this box, which is um, 10. Okay, this one doesn't work. Uh, okay, uh, we will need to put these figures 10.0.100.14. Here we have SSL engine on. Uh, again, if you don't plan to use uh, HTTPS for your netbox, uh, you need to take out uh, these parts from the configuration. Yeah, SSL engine on, SSL certificate file, and the uh, uh, key file. Yeah, they don't need to be in here. So I will save this one. Then I'm uh, gonna close it. Control X. And by the way, in the country file, I'm pretty sure that you also have a sample of this file that I'm showing. I was showing you for the configuration. So if we were gonna go to country. And then we have over here the Apache configuration. You can also see here an uh, example. So either you use uh, or you modify this, uh, this example that it came with Netbox or you're gonna use mine. The difference is almost zero, yeah? Then next for um, uh, CentOS, uh, we will need to install the MOD SSL for HTTPD to run. And by the way, the Y at the end here stands for yes, that you want to install the packages. Okay, so right now it's installing. And then we will need to actually restart the HTTPD system. Uh, sorry, service and enable it to start automatically. And by the way, I don't know if I enabled the netbox services, so I'm just gonna do it right now. I don't think I did it. Uh, let me quickly check it. Uh, history and then grep for enable. And yeah, we used enable only for PostgreSQL and Redis, not for Netbox. So we will uh, actually have to enable the Netbox services, this one, just to have it uh, running automatically when the server reboots. Okay, and right now back to our HTTP uh, thing, we will need to restart the service. And right now we will need to enable it for automatic startup. HTTPD. Let's check the status. It's running fine. Uh, next, we will need to check uh, the configuration syntax for HTTPD. Uh, HTTP D dash T and the syntax looks okay and right now all we need to do is to go to our web interface uh, running uh, HTTPS on it and uh, try to log in using our super user account so let's go to 10 dot 0.100.14 colon 80.85 and let's try to put HTTPS in front of it colon forward slash forward slash and as you can see it's working uh, of course uh, being a self-generated certificate it's not recognized by the browser or signed by a certified authority. So we will just proceed to the website. Here we have the 
welcoming screen for netbox let's call it this way let's try to log in using our uh, super user account and as you can see we have access we are running http on it in the next video i'm going to show you how you can actually integrate uh, netbox for uh, ldap authentication just to make it uh, easier for you to give uh, access to different users that want to get inside your tool thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe hit the like button if you like the video hit the notifications bell icon and talk to you guys in the next one